Entrepreneurs of the World, uh, our conference 2022. We're joined uh, this afternoon uh, from New York City by Helene Knapp. She is the founder uh, and CEO of City Row. And Helene's topic today is leadership lessons, navigating the evolving fitness landscape. Welcome, Helene. We look forward to uh, your talk and uh, our conversation, and I'm happy to hand it off to you. Awesome. Thank you, Glenn. Happy to be here. Uh, excited to talk to you guys a little bit more. So like Glenn said, hi, Helene Knapp, founder and CEO of City Row. I'm going I'm to walk you through a little bit of an evolution and hopefully tell you a little bit of a story with some lessons that I, I learned over the past eight and a half years. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me again, leadership lessons, how I navigated the evolving fitness landscape. Um, so I'll walk you through a little bit about the uh, the journey that I went through. This is this is in City, City Row, um, our at-home machine. I'll get into how we got here, because it's certainly not how we started. Um, but this is really the landscape that, um, under which I navigated building City Row over the past almost nine years, which is pretty crazy. So we'll kind of start at the beginning. I'll give you a little bit of a you know peek under the covers as to how I started this, the, this company, really what went into growing that as a brick and mortar business. Um, so opened some studios, really kind of hitting that world of Orange Theory and Soul Cycle, um, and then betting really really early on digital fitness, which obviously over the past couple of years is a really hot topic, but I took a risk and bet really early on in 2017, launching in 2018 to really tackle that at home consumer and experience. And then as we're starting to build that and then, then COVID hits, right, which had a massive effect on many, many different areas of business and City Row was hitting some crazy ways, which, which I'll share some learnings around. Um, and then all the while continuing to build a business and raising some money. So um, hopefully that's a nice framework for how we will get into things today. But I will start at the beginning because who doesn't love an origin story? Um, so a little bit about the early days of City Row and we'll just have a backdrop of me using a sledgehammer, which is definitely a metaphor for, for what needs to happen in the early days. Um, so I'll take a little bit of a step back and um, why did I start this company? So one, I'm not a former rower, never rode a day in my whole life. Um, I actually was building my career in tech startups in New York while personally just loving the boutique fitness lifestyle. I loved working out with my friends. So I was doing that all the time and unfortunately found myself with a really, really, really bad lower back injury at 23, which was totally crazy and sidelined me from this life, this lifestyle that I was really falling in love with and being healthy and taking care of myself. And all of a sudden I couldn't do anything anymore. The doctor was like, yeah, so you have three herniated discs and you need to really find yourself a low impact workout. Didn't know what that was. And at the same time, I was pretty frustrated that there was nothing in the market that not only was for me in this new kind of, you know, filter of needing a low impact workout, but that I also really wanted it to be in boutique fitness and fun. And I was mad that I was injured because I really trusted these brands that I had been going to and taking classes. And so the fact that I was injured was very frustrating to me. And I saw an opportunity to bring something into the market that was going to be everything that I was always looking for in boutique fitness. So, you know, high intensity, great music, awesome community, but I wanted something more. I wanted something that was actually when you like looked under the hood and started to peel back the onion of what was actually happening in those 50 minutes, it was going to be really, really good for you and your body. It was going to have a positive impact, not just by burning calories and toning your body, but it was also going to increase your mobility. And it was all, it was not going to apply any wear and tear on your body. So I had a, had a tall order. And as I started exploring how we would possibly build that, the rower really just kind of kept coming back into the forefront as this high intensity, total body, but also low impact piece of cardio equipment. And so um, a, a couple of themes that we'll get, get into is I decided to bet really early and take a risk on a piece of equipment that I didn't have any experience with, but I knew that it was going to be a really awesome cornerstone and anchor for a 50 minute hit class that was going to be both a rower and also on and off the machine. So I had this crazy idea and, you know, some really fantastic stories ensue. I think, um, you know, some of my favorites are around, you know, there was a couple of moments where I was still working for a tech company and looking for real estate for the tech company. We're growing like crazy. 
uh, at the same time, I was looking for real estate for the first city row location. And at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, I'm touring for city row. I see the seventh floor of an office building on West 26th street. I'm like, you know, what? a little too far West, um, you know, not high enough ceilings, but then during the normal workday, I'm on a real estate tour with my CEO of the tech company looking for new real estate. And lo, lo and behold, back to the same building, same super, and I'm doing the side hustle. And so I just had to pray in that moment that the super who was taking us around was not going to not gonna wrap me out. Luckily, luckily he was on my side for that day. Um, but in the early days, you have to be flexible. You have to be a little bit naive and know that you're going to jump into this really cold water and that like have confidence in yourself that you're going to be able to be nimble and flexible and just navigate whatever's thrown at you, right? Starting a business, leading a business, it's all about how are we going to creatively figure out how to navigate through this next chapter? Um, and I think that that's, that really, really is a theme uh, and probably the biggest lesson, not just for the early days, but as we continue, it's a constant, constant flex around flexibility. Um, so I think I'll morph a little bit into, you know, we started this business as brick and mortar, but the fitness market continues to grow. And I know this is a little, a little bit of a busy slide, but it's also my favorite slide. So, uh, bear with me on it. I think, you know, when you talk about making sure that you're going to step into the right waters, ensuring that there's enough demand is really important. And in the fitness industry, it's actually like, we don't, there, it's growing like crazy. Right. I don't think anyone's going to ever argue that there's not enough addressable market in overall fitness and wellness. And the macro elements of this are growing like crazy. And I think it's, it's hard to fathom an industry that's going to continue to grow at this scale. But Americans are, un, are unhealthy and we all need to move a lot more. I have some conversations with my, with my co-founder often like if Americans, every American just walked for 30 minutes a day, like imagine what you know, we would solve both mental and physical. Uh, and this, this is something that's going to continue to evolve. And when I look at the funnel over there on the right, you know, we're playing in a lot of different elements of this funnel. And I think something to think about is as somebody enters their fitness maturity or enters fitness for the first time, they're really going to be, you know, gravitating towards things that are, that are really familiar to them. And so when someone's like getting off the couch for the first time, they're not going to go build a home, home gym and spend $10,000 on equipment. They're going to go to the YMCA. They're going to start walking. They're going to go to Planet Fitness, right? These are accessible things that maybe they're going to get in a bike. They're going to walk. Maybe they're going to run. Um, and then hopefully over time, they're going to think, okay, you know what? I want to make a little bit of a larger commitment to my health and wellness, both from a time perspective and also from a financial perspective. And so that's where in the middle of the funnel here, you start to see boutique fitness right? City Row fits there. Orange Theory fits there. You're going to see Soul Cycle, a lot of boutique fitness studios across the country. And that's really because of this element of connectivity and community. People are craving community and connection, especially when you're, you know, pushing yourself to do something multiple times per week. There needs to be something more that gets you out of bed. And maybe it's like, you know, I promised my girl Tracy I would show up at 930 or man, if I don't show up, the instructor's really going to be pissed right? So you have to have additional layers of community as you're building something within a market that is so big with so many options. Um, and so when we think about how is City Grow going to enter this really, really, really large market, we've really, really, really hung our hat on community. And that means not just that we're connecting with the consumers, you know, from the brand to the end consumer, but also consumer to consumer. So that means fostering that community really everywhere you can. It's on social media. Ideally, it's in person quite a bit. Um, but how are you going to break through the clutter and the noise in such a big market? And for us, we really are, again, hanging our hat on community. Some favorites here. This room with my homie shirt is uh, absolutely my favorite. Top of all time for all of you 90s kids out there. Um, so moving along, you know, we really made a you know, I, pivot, I think is a little bit of an over, overused word, but we made a really big decision in 2017 to move from a brick and mortar business, which again, we launched in 2014 and opened a handful of franchises, started to award a lot more of them in 2016, 2017, opening more corporate stores. And in 2017, I had been watching the market of digital at-home fitness for a long time. 
and finally decided to take a really big risk and jump into digital very early. And it was something that I was personally very passionate about. I had watched friends have kids, move to the suburbs, or, you know, have a, have a life event where they really couldn't get to the studio anymore. Maybe their job changed, their schedule changed, and um, they still wanted to stay fit. And they were really craving something more. And the second I saw early numbers out of Peloton, I knew that we were actually, as City Row, in a very unique position to launch digital. And for me, I needed to have some really, really strong data points to take a big risk like this. You know, moving from a brick and mortar business, something that's not just software, but also hardware is a really, really, really big jump in moment. You're taking a really big leap there. But I knew a couple of things were true that gave us a competitive advantage to actually jump in. And we were uniquely positioned to win here because our modality was so perfect for that at-home consumer. This modality of rowing, which is again, total body, torch calories, and the low impact element paired with personal training style work and strength training is perfect for a 20 or 30 minute workout. So I knew we had that ahead of us. I also knew that both my co-founder and I met at a tech company. We're used to building software. We're used to building apps. So that piece of it actually felt like a bit of a homecoming. And then our rower, our piece of hardware stands up beautifully in the corner of the room. And so I knew there were a couple of really, we had a couple of tailwinds behind us, which enabled me to take this big leap and to really trust my gut that this was something that we were going to be able to tackle in a really meaningful way. Uh, and so where City Row is today is we obviously we have we've an at-home rower that you saw earlier on in the deck um, with, you know, obviously on-demand and live classes within that tracking the works, but we also connect to any rower. So something really important to us was, again, to that note of flexibility, keeping a system open that would allow anybody with a rower anywhere to engage with City Row. And so actually about half of the people that are a part of the City Row community have their own rower. They could be over in, in Germany, they could be in Australia, all over the world. Any rowers they have, they can still be a part of our community, take live on-demand classes, join the community. Um, and so pretty, pretty happy with the pivot, um, especially considering what happened uh, in early 2020. So huge, huge, huge impact on, again, many businesses, but City Row saw a total flip-flop, right? So on the digital side of our business, we saw crazy tailwinds as demand was skyrocketing. Whereas on the boutique fitness side of things, we really were impacted quite negatively, right? Totally gutted. It's a brand new franchise system. We had about eight franchises open in the six months before COVID. And they were really, truly, truly, truly underwater. So it was pretty crazy to navigate the world of half the business is, is crushing it, the other half is underwater. Um, and for us, it was really about how do we stay true to who we are as a business? And I think, you know, I've had many different people over the years come to me and say, well, if you only had the retail side of the business, right? And then uh, obviously during COVID, all the emphasis was on digital. And for us, you know, I had to constantly say, nope, our power is that we are hybrid. And from a digital perspective, the fact that we have these physical locations really sets us apart. And, you know, part of the reason that I'm never, you know, afraid about a competitor entering the market, you know, there's a lot, a lot of rumors that, you know, Peloton's going to take a, a last slot over here and, and uh, you know, build a connected rower. And I think it's very, it's quite imminent as we know, I can't wait, right? A rising tide truly lifts all ships. And when I was navigating the world of rowing eight, nine years ago, I, people were constantly questioning, like, is this rowing thing here, right? I can't think of a better validation. So as long as you have a core differentiator as your brand, there's really no reason to fear any kind of competition. I think it's always important to study your worthy competitors. Um, but for us, the retail strategy really sets us apart. And so all these digital native brands, like welcome to the party. Uh, let's let's continue to let's continue to play. So I think taking us a little bit into, into where we are today, we've been doing this for eight and a half years. And you know, when you take a little bit of a step back and think through like how how do we continue to navigate this? How have we gotten to where we are today? For for me and for City Row, it's really about leaning into who you are and authenticity. Um, you know, what, what did it take to get here? It took a lot of resilience. I think resilience is a term that, you know, 
I resonate with quite a bit, particularly as, you know, I talk about how we navigated all these different moments into that we're not always easy to get to where we are today. It takes a lot of resilience. Um, it also takes a lot of being vulnerable and um, acknowledging who you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are when you need to take a pause, right? Taking care of you is taking care of the company. Super important to put on an out of office every once in a while and not look at email. Um, so how can you continue to build that resilience? What are the tools? How are you going to take care of yourself? Um, and then the last piece for, for us at City Row was who, who are we? Um, and for us, we are we are female founded, female led. And that was something that was really important for us to bring to the forefront as we continue to welcome new people into City Row and introduce people to a modality that they are, they're likely never, not had a lot of experience with. And so I'm um, really proud of our heritage and our you know, focus on women. Um, but I think that, that's a bit of a recap and I, you know, eight, eight main lessons here that, you know, talk through the different phases of City Row. That being flexible and nimble, I mean, yeah, Glenn, we could talk about things a little bit is, is the most important. And I would say, you know, how can you get over the rock, right? You have to be really flexible and, and nimble and creative in how you're going to get there. Um, for us, again, working in a huge addressable market with a lot of noise, community, connection, authenticity, like that's how you are going to really, really stand out in the crowds. And then, you know, this really third one, be creative and take risks. So many people told me not to launch digital. So many people, but I really saw the opportunity. I thought the data was behind us. And so we, we jumped in early and if we hadn't, we definitely wouldn't be here today because COVID would have wiped us off the, off the map entirely. Um, on the competition front, embrace it, but know what your competitive advantages are. And then diversify. So this kind of really comes into us playing that hybrid card and really meeting the, the consumer in multiple places. It also means that our business is diversified. So we were able to, to weather COVID. And now in this recalibration post COVID, we also have a retail footprint. And so making sure that you're not only heads down and you know focusing on that cause and winning, but also have multiple paths to win. Resilience, talked about it a lot, but you really can't, can't be a leader if you don't have resilience because the punches will just keep coming and you have to know how to let them roll it off. Uh, and then the last one, one of the last ones for me is really taking care of you is taking care of the company. Something that took me, took me a couple of years to figure out, but I tell every young entrepreneur that if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you run this business? Um, and lastly, if you're not having fun, why are we doing this? So thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. But Great, great tips for any any young entrepreneur, any any aspiring business person. Uh, and I, I, you said early on, and I think it's always the most effective way, right? People always get nervous about cold water, right? Just jump in, right? Jump in. You know, you know, it's going to be the, the shock to the system. Jump in, and then and then figure it out, and navigate it, right? And 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 work your way work your way through. Uh, it seems seems like over the over the course of, of of your of your business journey, you're really you're meeting you're meeting your customers where they are. Right, where you're not you're not predisposing them. Well, you have to come here. Well, you have to do this. Right, you're giving you're giving them options, and you're being flexible. And as you said, nimble, which is which is which are all all great qualities. And the fact that your machine can you know in, in a spot like Manhattan where space is is tight can stand up in a corner. Don't 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 underestimate that either. Right, from a oh from listen, a, I got I got one right here. There you go. Look at Jeff. Jeff, don't even know it's there. Right. It, Blends blends in blends in nicely. Right? Nobody's tripping over it, right? And this comes this comes from the uh, you can't see my basement where we've got the we've got the COVID the COVID treadmill downstairs that's been used like three times. So it's one of those one of those one of those purchases where it's like okay, come on, we we know it's there. I I keep saying it's my rainy day. I'm a big walker, so it's my rainy day kind of kind of thing. If the if the weather is awful, you know, it's, I, good, it's a good safety net to have there, Glenn. Yeah, you go, you go down, and, and and you give it, you give it, you give it a try as it goes. But you know, I mean, I mean, you're empowering uh, your customers. Obviously, as you said, fe female founded, female female led. It's it's a tremendous, it's a tremendous story as, as you as you go through. How from a from just the, it, interacting with, and so again going through a, a, a financing round and stuff. How much storytelling was involved as part of as part of that financing round? Because it's because it's a great story. 
And it seems like it sells itself. Oh, thank you, Glenn. Um, it's all storytelling, right? I think, and the story has had to evolve and change depending on what phase of the business we were in. In the early days, when we're fundraising, it's okay, well, we're brick and mortar. We want to go for a profit margin. We're, you know, people are like, are you going to franchise? I was like, I don't think so. Cause I don't really know anything about it. I remember this conversation. I was like, but we'll be just like a, a soul cycle of growing. And then, you know, when that moment came, it was evaluating franchising and going that path. Um, and then it really has been this omni story for a long time. But again, as you're, as you're telling the story, you know, you as the founder have a very clear sense of what it is and how it wins. But, you know, most people that you're talking to are not in your industry. And if you have a really complicated product, it's how can I make this digestible for someone who does not spend all their time in fitness and doesn't spend their time looking at that fitness maturity curve. So it's a constant storytelling, but it's a storytelling depending on who you're talking to and at what stage of the business. Yeah, you know, it makes makes sense, and, and I I I love the fact that it, it's it's about community and connectivity because most most businesses like that, uh, most relationships are like that. Uh, as you said, you kind of you kind of whether it's working out or even when you're work, you you kind of like to be working with people. You know, you surround yourselves with, with people that hey, I like seeing them, right? I can't wait to go to work today, right? Or I can't I can't wait to go do my workout. Because I'm I'm with I'm with my friends and and we're of the same kind of uh, you know minds and goal setting and things like that really 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 important as, as it as it as it goes as it goes through. How do you see how do you see the landscape go, going forward? I mean, do you, uh, we, we, uh, knock on knock on for Micah here that 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 COVID is perhaps hopefully dissipating. I mean, do you see do you see people becoming more confident in 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 the space and being together or you know what do you think? we're definitely seeing trends coming out of COVID. People are, are craving, you kind of you hit the nail on the head. People need connectivity and they need, they need to be around other humans. You know, we, we are social beings. There's a reason that we've always, you know, been, been in groups and, and clans and, and tribes and whatnot. We need that energy around people. And so I think there's a, there's different, like there's different phases of people that are going to run back to the studios and be around people. But on the whole, like there's a reason that Planet Fitness is killing it right now. And obviously Peloton is having some challenges. And that's because we're experiencing what I call the great recalibration in fitness. We're going from a world that was forced to be digital and probably, you know, pulled forward 10 years worth of demand there. But the behavior of the consumers was not there yet. And so we're, they're, they're kind of flip-flopping, right? We, we actually developed some really great habits at home over the past two years, but how are you gonna balance both, right? Are people gonna continue to use that treadmill in the basement? Maybe on a rainy day, maybe when the studio is canceled, maybe when they don't have time to get there. Uh, but overall, I think when you talk about what does the landscape look like in the future, back to that funnel slide, more and more people are gonna to continue to enter top of funnel. If anything, I think the average American gained 29 pounds during COVID. So more people are going to enter top of funnel and we're going to continue to nurture them at the different, you know, touch points, whether that be a big box gym, a boutique or connected fitness, which is really at the bottom of the funnel. And so the whole thing is going to continue to grow, but over the next, you know, th this is, this is what it's going to look like between studios and digital over the next little while with both growing. Well, again, then that's you're you're in, you're you're in the sweet spot for that. You know, twenty nine pounds. It's it's either give the tailors more business or take care of yourself, right? <laughs> one of, one of the other as 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 we look as we look forward. Terrific. Well, listen, Helene Knapp, CEO of City Row. Thank you for joining us today. Great conversation as always. Really appreciate your support. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Uh, both you know and, and your journey and, and and what is truly a great story thank so you look, thanks for having me look forward to seeing you next time okay you too take care take good care thanks bye